Hello, hope you're fine. This is the Shaggy Show. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Good luck to you, mate. Oh, oh, there's going to be some drama ahead. All I wanted was a pie. And then I hatched out of an egg. Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. I see your mental condition is improving. Is it metaphorical? Is it, is it deep? Is it deep? Good boy. He said all that shy is right. Jeez. Hi, me, Governor. It's the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Hello. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. To be honest, I'm not doing a great deal. Just sort of hanging out, chilling out. Texting, texting with my friends. I sound like a teenager. Shy Yeti, have you done your homework? Yes, Dad. Um, but no, no, I, I'm just not doing that much. And um, But I did think of a few things I could share with you that might be fun for this episode. Because it depends how much you find Yeti Uncle John and Cromarty talking about things fun. I find them quite uh, amusing myself. Um, I could listen to them all day, and that's what I intend for us to do this episode. Well, not all day, but for the next hour or so. We may have some other bits and pieces too. Anyway, let me run the theme music, and when we come back, I'll tell you a little bit more about what I have in store. Darling, it's the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> yes, but it's a positive thing, Paul. The High Life, the Shy Life. You won't find a cast of characters like this everywhere. I mean, I'll, I'll go anywhere for a potato. Delicious. Hello, campers. How are you? You quite like a big bang, don't you, Paul? <laughs> go Shy Yeti. Oh, I hope he hasn't found out my secret. Do you think he has? I love the Yeti's S. It's my favourite thing. If you thought that was bad, just listen to this. Yeah, I, I am strangely drawn to Yeti Uncle John's ankles as well. <laughs> I could eat more body weight. <laughs> Every day. Has anyone seen my hot sausage? It's all gooey and greasy. Yum, 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 yum. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to begin. It's the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> I'd like that. Yeah. Look, mommy, I'm famous. <laughs> Marvellous. Marvellous, Paul. Hi there. So, listeners, here we are. So, so what am I going to do this episode? Well, as I say, Cromarty has supplied me with some material, some recordings he made of conversations he had with Yeti Uncle John. Now, Cromarty, why did you record these conversations? Well, Paul, I recorded them because Yeti Uncle John invariably um, says some ridiculous things. Oh, I see. Yes, that makes sense. So you're like the straight man in the conversation. I am the frustrated one, and Yeti Uncle John is the frustrating one. Oh, right, yes. So, why do these conversations take place? Well, mostly around the house. One of them took place at a barber's, but uh, I see. And what was the topic of the conversations? Well, um, a sort of life and love, you could say. Relationships. Um, fashion. Fashion. You got your Uncle John talking about fashion. Yes, yes, well, that kind of occurred because we were at the barber's. Oh, I see. You know how many magazines are left lying around? Yes, yes, I, I do remember that. Back when I actually went to a barber's. Oh, dear, poor Paul. Uh, I know. Um, what else? Well, yet young Uncle John was also considering a new career or sideline. Oh, dear, isn't he always? I know. And then finally, um, well, he and I were going to order a takeaway. A takeaway? Ooh. Where was I? I think you were away, Paul. Oh, OK. Uh, oh, uh, uh, listeners, I I haven't heard the recording yet, but all I can tell you is Uncle John is notorious when it comes to trying to select items from a, a, a takeaway menu. He can't decide. He gets overexcited and greedy. Yes, well, this is much like what happened uh, on the recording. Ah, right. Well, we won't discuss it anymore. We'll leave that to light 
to the listeners. Um, so other than those four recordings, which range from about 10 minutes to nearly 20, we have some other material as well. Uh, not so long ago, I was visiting my mum and we did a recording of us baking a cake. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Paul. Yes, it, it was fun. You know, I was saying to my mum, there must have been a time before TV where maybe they did do cookery shows on the radio. You would have thought so. I mean, although in more recent times, it's, it's nice to see the ingredients going in front of the cameras. Um, there's no real reason why you can't do... I mean, some things we do on the Show Life podcast are deliberately obtuse, and we do it just to wind people up. Like the fashion segment. The fashion segment. Well, yes, when I tried on different glasses and things, yes, that's true. Oh, dear. But there's no real reason you can't do cooking. We just had to, you know, describe what was going into the pan and, you know, the bowl, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, it was a nice uh, excuse to to talk with my mum. Maybe we'll do it again. I'm sure it'll be good, Paul. I think so. Uh, we've also, this episode, got another chat with Paul from school. Oh, other Paul. Yeah. We met recently, we were going to the cinema. What film did you see, Paul? Uh, we saw the new Indiana Jones film. Ah, that sounds like a, a packed a packed episode. Yes, it does. Um, I probably won't um, do any links between the uh, uh, recordings, to be fair, having done so already. But we'll start with um, one or two of... Cromarty and Yehia Uncle John's conversations and then move on perhaps to the cooking and to Paul and, yeah, and then maybe the remaining chat, uh, Cromarty and Yehia Uncle John chats. I think that makes sense. There may be some music as well, who knows? It sounds wonderful, Paul. Wonderful. It jolly well does, doesn't it? OK. Well, let's get started. Um, here is Cromarty and Yehia Uncle John and there. Uh, having a bit of a, a natter. Oh dear. <laughs> Have a listen. Oh, this is interesting. Well, what's that, dear dear Uncle John? Oh, it's one of them relationship uh, uh, quizzes, you know. Uh, I don't want to do that, thank you. No, I am not in a relationship. Well, I mean, I mean, you have been. I mean, and I mean, you 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 could be again. I mean, I mean. Yes, we're not going to discuss that today, thank you very much. Not my past or my future. I know what you're like, always trying to find out what's going on between Martin and I, and uh, it's none of your business. Why, why? Why don't you do the quiz, if you're so good at relationships? I, I never said I was good at relationships. No, no, I've noticed. D- d- uh, just a minute, I, I could be good. Well, if you think so. Now, listen. There's no need to be mean. I'm not being mean. I have a very good relationship with my magpies, as you well know. All right, then. Do the relationship quiz with you and the magpies, then. What? Go on, then. How good a relationship you have with them. They might as well be your bird friends. All right, then I will do. Uh... What are your expectations in our relationship with, with the magpies? Uh, I expect them to be squawky, expect them to fly about, expect them to do some painting, expect them not to steal shiny things, because that's like a stereotype. Um, I expect them to uh, come home at night, not stay out or fly too far. <laughs> yes, but that sounds that sounds fine. What's the next question? 
Uh, how do you feel about how much time you spend together? Well, how do you feel? I feel fine, thank you very much. Yeah, they're up on the roof squawking. I'm doing other things. It works fine. Uh, I, 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 don't, I couldn't complain. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, what would be the perfect romantic vacation for you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think you're having a romantic relationship with them. Um, but what would be the perfect vacation for you? Well, I mean, I had a vacation with them not so long ago down to Swanage. And it was awful. Because they, because they kept fighting with the seagulls. Uh, so uh, let's, let's forget about that one. That's fine. So you don't really like going on holiday with the magpies? No, no, never again. All right. Uh, what do you want to achieve in your life? Are you reading the questions now? It looks like I am, yes. What do you want to achieve in your life? What's that got to do with the magpies? Well, as you're their father or whatever, it does it does affect them. Oh, I suppose so. Um, what do I want to... Well, I want to keep exploring and doing uh, inventions and I want to look after them and that's what I want to do. I want to be on the Shola podcast. Maybe have my own um, spin-off show one day, although, you know... All right. Um, what do you love most about the magpies? What do I love most about them? Uh, their lovely wings and squawking. You love the squawking? Oh, y- yeah, I do, I think. I've sort of got used to it now. All right. Um, how did your last relationship end? What, with a magpie? Well, I, well... This is where the quiz doesn't quite work out because it's not about magpies. It's about people. Well, I suppose so. Well, I, I, I don't know when I last had a relationship to speak of. I've never had a pet. Not that the magpies are pets, they're family. But I, I don't know. It's, it's all new. It's all new to me. All right. What do you think about jealousy in relationships? Jealousy? What, like if another bird came and distracted them or another person came and tried to woo them away? Well, yes. Oh, I wouldn't be happy with that. I'm afraid I'd be very jealous. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't put up with it. I wouldn't stand for it. I wouldn't put up with it, not at all. All right, fine. Um, How important is it for you to equally divvy up chores? Divvy up chores? Oh, uh, well, I suppose the magpies do do their share of housework, but they also poo a lot on the on the roof. But, um... No, I do get them doing some things, you know, scrubbing things with their beaks, you know, like with a a scrubbing brush in their mouths, in the beaks, yes. Scrub, scrub, washing up and stuff like that. (laughs) All right. Oh, sometimes I send them down the shops. Uh, Yeah. Anyway, best not to talk too much about that. (laughs) All right. Um, What song would you dedicate to your relationship? Uh, uh, What's that Beatles one? That bird can sing or something. What about, or I wish I could fly way up into the sky, but I can't. Uh, Eagle by Abba. Uh, One of them. All right. Um, Because there's a bird in the title? Yes. The bluebirds, the white cliffs of Dover. Or uh, a nightingale sung in Barclay Square. (laughs) We get the point. Um... What is the best advice anyone ever gave to you? What? Oh. Uh, uh, well, you know, to keep on keeping on. Um, uh, I think, do you remember Mr. Andrew? The one who came over, I know there's a lot of Andrews, the one who came over and I got on very well with him. Paul's old friend. Uh, yes, yes. I said, perhaps I should focus on one thing that I'm good at. And he said, why? Why? Why just limit yourself? You should be good at all. You should just keep on at all of them. Uh, that, that's, uh, he, I, I thought the same, but he, he confirmed it. All right. Good. Um, what makes you blush? Um, usually uh, too much of uh, fizzy water. It really, you know, uh, um, makes makes my face blush up. Um, also curry 
And sometimes if I turn on one of them carry-on movies, uh, there's, there's, there's somebody running past in, in, a, in, a, in a bra. Uh, yeah, that makes me blush. All right. Um, do you have a romantic fantasy? Do I have a romantic... What's this got to do with the magpies? I don't know. I'm just reading it from this quiz. Oh, do I have a... Oh, I, I do think about steak and kidney pies quite a lot. Well, that, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. That's my answer. Okay. When does this quiz finish? It's nearly finished. Um, what, what is the earliest memory you have of your magpies? Um, I, I uh... I remember them squawking and flying around. Yeah, one of them did a poo on my head. I had a new hat on at the time. Wasn't best pleased. Still, I knew it meant they liked me. <laughs> how romantic. Um, how much alone time do you need? How uh, much alone time? Do, well, you know, not much really. I'm in the taxi. There's people around. The magpies with me then sometimes. I... I'm very rarely not with somebody. I'm either with somebody from the podcast or, or with one of the magpies. You know, I don't really need alone time. I, I like to be in company. And that, that's good. Um, how content are you with the amount of um, uh, affection in your... Uh, I have to rephrase this question. It's not made for magpies. All right. Do you get enough attention... Or like affection or kindness from your magpies? From my magpies, yes. They sometimes bring me sweeties or flowers. It's very nice, very endearing. I feel loved. Well, that's the main thing. Um, how did you grow up? How did I grow up? Oh, well, I just ate food and then I, was, I sort of started to grow. Oh, and I had some water. Like a plant. I guess I'm a tree, really. Um, okay. Well, that's a refreshingly quick reply. I thought we might have the 12-hour version of that one. Oh, oh. Uh, well, you've read my autobiography, haven't you? I, I did, but it didn't mention much about your childhood. No, good point. Did you ever start a rumour? Is this about the magpies? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, well, people say that things I've said are rumours, but I say they're truths. I'm just, I'm just um, speaking the truth. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yes, deals. Just speaking the truth. It's important to do that. Especially if you're a magpie. Is that it? Uh, yes, I think that's it. Uh, do you feel any better for answering the questions? Oh, dear. I don't know if I do. I think I might have to have a lie down. Oh, dear. Oh, I never know anyone takes so many lie downs as you, yet the Uncle John. Oh, thank you. It's the nicest thing that anyone said to me all day. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, Paul, did you know that uh, Yeti Uncle John was quite interested in fashion? Yeti Uncle John interested in fashion? That's new to me. <laughs> yes, I didn't know until we were both uh, waiting to have our hair cut once. You went and had your hair cut with Yeti Uncle John? Yes, um... Don't know if you know, but uh, the the Kapow company opened uh, Kapow hairdressers. Well, I didn't know that, but it doesn't surprise me. Well, I know well, we were sitting there uh, waiting, and uh, you know how they have magazines uh, when you're waiting to have your hair cut? Uh, well, I do sort of remember that. I haven't had my hair cut at a barber's for about 20 years. Oh, yes, I forgot. Um, well, uh, I was reading bits to to Yeti Uncle John, and uh, uh, he said uh, he said um, oh, read, read me some fashion tips. I I uh, I want to uh, yeah. I, I want to know what what's the in thing property. What does it say in that magazine you're reading? What? Uh, I, 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 actually, there is a list here of all the things that are in. All right, tell me. I want to. Uh, I want to base my, uh, want to base my uh, wardrobe on, uh, you know, what's in. Uh, I want to be the chicest taxi driver in all the land. Oh dear, all right. Uh, what colour should I wear? Apparently it's all bright colours. 
fuchsia. Um, it should feel like a stab in the eye. A stab in the eye. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I do need to drive. Well, apparently, uh, go for heavy pink or azure. Uh, you know, ultra blue. Um, or maybe even canary yellow. Canary yellow? I don't want to make the magpies, uh, you know, upset. No, also, uh, the whole sailor look is in. The sailor look? Well, that could suit me, actually. Yeah, I think I'd look quite good dressed as a sailor. In fact, you know, uh, I, I've done that before now. Oh, I didn't know you were in the Navy, did you, Uncle John? No, I, I was just doing it because I went out with this. Well, anyway, they were quite pervy and they like that sort of thing. Oh, oh I see. You, uh, Dee, what are you doing at the barbers? You're having your fur clipped. Are you having your fur clipped? Come and come and join us. Come and join us. We're just talking about fashion, okay? Yeah. Dills, take a seat here. Uh, I mean, Dills is the most fashionable cat in all the land. So, uh, yeah, he is. Yes. Um, apparently, uh, you should be taking all your clothes to charity shops. You know, all the ones you're not wearing. Um, that that's that's always a good thing to do. Um, uh, I don't know. You may be asking um, less less or more this season. Less or more. Uh, what's the answer? Well, it's definitely more this season. More and then some more. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Gone are the days of a single stark chic dress being all you need to get through the day. Um, you know, you need overblown corsages, great, great regiments of cuffs matching your forearm and important jewellery. Important jewellery? Like an expensive watch. I guess so, yes. And complicated shoes. Complicated shoes. Right, I remember that. Does that mean I wear them back to front or something? I guess so. Or, or upside down or, or inside out. I'll give it a go. Uh, what's next? Well, how many shoulders do you need this season? How many shoulders? I've already got two. Well, apparently you just need the one. Oh, blimey. Oh, I, I guess so. Uh, just, just what? One shoulder in, one shoulder out, is it? Something like that, I think. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm noting this all down. Uh, what about trousers? Ah, well, ah, well, wide-legged are best, but only if you are willowy and lanky. Otherwise, you should wear them cropped or skinny. Oh, 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 I'm not good with skinny. Oh, well, you know, you could go ultra-wide um, or tapered at the ankle um, or even try out those drop-bottom harem pants that everyone's wearing these days. Oh, are they? I didn't even notice it. Oh, well, that's the thing. Oh, dear. So... Oh, I've got a question. Am I tailored and tight or loungy and loose? Well, you're both. Tailing is pivotal at this season. But you do need to relax too. Oh, thank goodness for that. And uh, what, what's what's the top jacket for spring? Well, shove your swing jacket to the back of your wardrobe. Uh, that whole triangle shape has collapsed like a house of cards. Uh, what you need now, and I mean need, because this uh, little belter works just as well with jeans as it does with dresses, shorts and miniskirts. Uh, what you need is a downsized boyfriend jacket, uh, if you could afford it, that is. But uh, bag a, a classic designer version from Stella McCartney or Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, River Island has nailed it on the high street. River Island has nailed it on the high street. <laughs> yes, yes. And what about sheer tights? Are, are they really in? Well, yes, but you can ignore fashion dictates. That's why it's all such fun. Of course, I suppose so. Uh, I think we're going to get called up any minute. We better speed through this. Yes, yes. Um, do you want to know what the biggest stayer is of the season? I do. Well, um, you can rely on what you've already got. Um, of course, uh, I mean, a trench coat um, is always good, but uh, preferably in electric blue. I do like blue. Uh, I may have one. 
Um, what about what about the top print? The the top print for the spring is um, where it's 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 a a star print. A star print, really. Uh, what about heels? Wedge platform flatty. <laughs> uh, the platform here remains the foundation for your feet this summer. So you probably already own a pair. Oh, I do. But do I really have to wear knee-high socks? No, no, no. Not at all. So what about the expense? Do I need to take out a second mortgage? No, 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 no. Um, really, um, don't, don't, don't even bother. Oh, oh, great. And what about tie-dye? <laughs> Approach with caution. Oh, dear. I wanted to tell you about what a tea dress is, but I don't think we've got time. Oh, well, whatever you say, Cromarty. Oh, 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 what bag should I be wearing? Well, um, you could go for the DIY Fendi baguette, which comes with his own set of Panettone marker pens. Um, but, uh, well, otherwise, take a, a look in the charity shops around Belgravia. Oh, right, okay. Is it true that the toga is back in? Well, uh, it has been cited. Versace and Gucci were both going very I Claudius earlier in the year and the asymmetric fluid draped mini dress at Hermes was uh, well fittingly enough quite divine oh I'm glad I asked what if I've got a big bottom do I need to disguise it well you could try a false moustache and a pair of comedy spectacles oh fair enough uh, and, and mini skirts I think you know the answer to that one already but uh, you can always resort to uh, pantaloons and leopard print can I still get away with that? Well, well, only you know that, Itty Uncle John. You can try it, but uh, certainly not if it's a jumpsuit. Right, okay. Uh, and bangles? Oh, I love that group. No, I mean, on my hands, my wrists. Oh, yes, uh, bangles, always bangles. Huge, enormous, giant bangles. And is there anything I should definitely get rid of? Well, trilbies, polka dots, power dressing, sequins swing coats, uh, shiny leggings, uh, little black dresses, a slogan t-shirts, little leather jackets, and definitely no to a maternity fox. Oh, well, I don't know what I'd do without you, Cromarty. Oh, I'm going to come to you every year from now on. Uh, yes. Oh, oh dear. Cromarty, what's wrong? I've just noticed the date on this magazine. W w what? Y yes, well, um, you know you thought you were getting advice for the here and now. Well, yeah, I asked you to tell me what was in fashion. I wanted to know w w what was in fashion. Yes, well, um, everything I've told you was in fashion in um, uh, February 2008. Oh, oh, well, that's kind of recent, isn't it? That's recent enough. Or, or if it's not recent, then it's probably back in fashion. No, it's fine, Cromarty. I'll just stick to everything you told me. Definitely like the sound of those future hot pants. I never mentioned future hot pants. Oh, you definitely said something about future. Anyway, well, I think it's my turn to go up. <laughs> you don't mind if I go first, do you, Dealey? No, I didn't think so. Oh, yet the Uncle John. Today we're going to do something that is uh, very good to be done on audio. Um, you smell the smells, uh, look at the wonderful 
um, things being made, we are going to do cooking on audio. Yeah. Mum's here. What are, you, what are we cooking today, Mum? I'm trying a cake I've never made before. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, a Bakewell oh. cake. Oh, a Bakewell cake. You what? get a Bakewell tart. This is a Bakewell oh. Oh. cake where you should put fresh raspberries in the, between the layers of the cake, but I'm going to put my homemade raspberry jam. If you put fresh fruit in cakes, it doesn't keep very long. They mm. soon go mouldy. So I'm hoping with the jam it will last at least three days. Mm. Usually I make muffins on Sunday um, because I'm using the oven for a Sunday roast. Uh, so that way I get twice from the money. Mm. Right. So I've got, I'm all prepared. Right. I think I have got all the ingredients laid out, which is most unusual. So there's a weighing device, there's a bowl, there's all sorts. Do you tell, <laughs> tell us what you're doing next? Right. Well, this is an, an all-in-one cake, as it's called, which mm. means actually you put everything in all together and then you blitz it in a word, not a word processor, sorry, <laughs> a huge <food That'd> be... <laughs> processor. <laughs> well, you can, you can do both and see what comes out best. Which I don't possess. So I have to put the ingredients in individually and gradually um, combine them. It's literally to get air into the mixture and make the cake rise. Right. By the way, when I think of it, mm. when you put the, uh, the cake in the oven, on no account open the oven door in the first 10 to 15 minutes or else you'll have a flat cake. Uh -oh. Right. So it's a very easy recipe because mm. everything is... 140 grams. Mm -hmm. So, so you're opening the margarine. Is that margarine or butter? Margarine. It's well, the, the recipe says butter, but mm. um, good old stork does me. Stork. Right. So 140 grams in old money is about. Let me think. Uh, that's that's 100. That's about six ounces. So, um, I'm going to uh, uh, roughly cut it a little bit less than, than half. Mm -hmm. And it goes into the weighing device. And um, 140. It actually needs slightly more. Uh, cutting another slice. A very thin slice. Uh, so that's... Yes, that's too much. <laughs> and you want to get the ratio as near as possible. So the slice, right. you cut the slice yes, in half, the little slice, yes, and that, that, that's, that's about good. right. So then, because it's still, it is, it's softening, but it's still quite hard, so I cut it into pieces, mm. into chunks. Mm. Right. By the way, um, I often make muffins, in which case I just put them in um, cake Little cases. Cake cases yeah. But this is a whole cake, and you yep. need to prepare um, the a tin. tin. A tin. Yes. Mm. Uh, either just grease it very thoroughly, or I prefer just to. I save the paper from the margarine or butter that mm -hmm. um, I buy when, when I use it, and then I can just line the cake tin with that. Mm. Right, so I've cut up the margarine and now I'm going to sit down. Mm. I'm sit down as well. <laughs> yes, you can sit down. <coughs> and cream the margarine, which should only take a few seconds with the fork. Yeah, sitting down is difficult. As I say, if you've got a food processor and you just walk it all in there. You <laughs> That would just be very annoying. No, I won't do that. Right, yes. Right, so there's that. Mix, mix, mix. Yeah. It's all soft it's, now. It's, it's all nice and, and soft. Squished with the fork. Yeah. So now we have the caster sugar. The recipe actually says golden caster sugar, which I don't have. <coughs> caster sugar is a finer grade grain than granulated. Yeah. It's sort of between granulated and icing Ice sugar. sugar. Uh, I have got demerara sugar, but I think it, it, doesn't, colour, it, doesn't, isn't it? it doesn't really matter. So again, 140. 
shaking into the mix into the weighing device. And that goes into the bowl with the mixed up margarine. Mixed up, it's all mixed up. Now it has to sit down. Oh, and be sitting down again. Until it is light and fluffy. Till it's like what? Light and fluffy. Oh, right. Half the sugar. What have you got in there? Ant? No. <laughs> What's going on? No, it's unidentifiable. An unidentifiable. It's a UFO. <laughs> yeah. The UFO, the UFO, in, a dead UFO. <laughs> <laughs> Country stir, stir, stir. Takes, takes slightly longer. Yeah. We're basically getting getting as much air into everything. Mm. So you don't have you know to sit there with whistle. Right. Okay, I think that's not too bad. That looks good. Yeah. Um, time stirring times may be um, uh, slightly shorter on the podcast version uh, because it's not very interesting to just do. Uh, so make sure you stir yours um, appropriately until it looks ready. Not 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 think. Oh well, he only stirred it for five seconds because actually we might have been stirring for six hours. We weren't stirring for six hours. We were, but we were stirring till it was ready. Well, I wasn't. I was just watching. But it's very hard work about watching. About three minutes. Obviously. About three minutes. <laughs> yeah, three minutes of dead air isn't isn't good. So. Um, What's now? Flour now? Yes, yeah, so 140 grams of flour. This is useful, useful listeners, because it's all the same amount. It's very good. Shake, shake, shake. I hope I'm getting the right amount. I'm doing it faster than I would really. Um, and then... This also has ground, ground almonds. Oh, this is, this is good. Good, um, bake well bake taste. Taste to it, yeah. These are, these are pre ground. We don't have to grind them. Thankfully, we don't have to grind them. No. They look quite. Um, could you add a couple. Could, could you add a, a sprinkling full of real ones as well if you want? Or, or is that enough? No. Um, no, it does. It does say put some flaked almonds on the top. On top. I, I haven't got flaked yeah. almonds actually. Um, 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 this is a bit more adding up if I add it in. <laughs> I've got to be two hundred and eighty now. Are you putting the same amount of ground almonds? In yeah. It's they are very grand. They almost look like yeah. the consistency of the the the, the, well, the flour almost. They kind of look like breadcrumbs, but they're not. They're almond crumbs. It's virtually the whole packet, isn't it? I was surprised it was so much, so mm. much but mm. whenever I do a new recipe, I always follow it exactly. Mm. Some recipes I do a cherry coconut cake, and I know that, that they're suggesting six ounces of sugar, but I find that far too sweet. It's probably good to uh, get ground almonds because they're quite tough little devils um, and if you were going to grind them yourself you'd probably oh, de- yeah. dent your blade right now i'm going to add two eggs what size large um, small medium um large yeah large two like large eggs into large because two isn't very much for this amount of yeah. um, flour and ground almonds so the, and what i do is i put a, a small amount smallish amount in of, of flour yeah. ground almonds and then because if you put the eggs into the butter and flour butter and sugar without any flour mm. they can curdle mm. and once they curdle um, it's not going to work so well so right one egg in one egg in stirring 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 yeah you're getting the sound now. yeah A bit more, more. of the flour mixture. Second egg. Try not to get any shell in the mixture, of course. Now this recipe also calls for Ooh. a teaspoon of vanilla essence. So okay. I'll put that in before I forget. 
Any any added liquid at this stage is good. <laughs> yes, it doesn't actually say that um, to add any liquid, but I should just add some water to make it to a soft mm -hmm. dropping consistency. Just depends on the size of the egg. Is that one one teaspoon one of teaspoon, yes. of vanilla essence? Yes. You still got a little bit. You still got to, you got to do some stirring. You still got a bit of. of, of Flour left as well. Yeah, just getting this bit well mixed up around. Yes, yeah. You end up with having a bit at the bottom, which mm. you haven't got. You haven't added any. I know you have added sugar because you added two dark sugar, didn't you? Oh, um, you haven't added any milk, but you don't need no, milk. No. Um, ever since I, one time I had an allergy dairy product, so mm. I always mix with water and I just continue and I don't. Mm. So it doesn't need very much. Mm -hmm. So I just added a drop of water. All of the flour and almond has got in now. Yeah. Uh, so now you've got a, a hard paste. Yes, there's oh. got to be a drop in consistency. Well, that isn't really dropping. It is if you waited. <laughs> it's quite it's quite stodgy at the moment. So you need a bit of water. So I, I just uh, I don't know. Probably a couple of um, tablespoons of water. I just judge it how much. It doesn't. You mm -hmm. don't have to be too precious about it. Mm. I don't think that's quite enough. Nearly, you see. But, yeah, still a bit. Oh, just yeah. a little bit more water. Yeah. Stir, stir, stir. Stir, stir, stir. <laughs> Quite stodgy. No, with the, I've got the tin, which tin. is um, lined. Lined tin. Not, um, how would you describe the size of that tin? What, it's like a uh, medium size tin? It's, um, it's like a measure, I've got measure. I think it's six centimetres across. Mm, yeah, it's not massive, not the most massive. No, I mean, quite often something like this is quite good in a tray bake, in which case you say, do double or 50% more mixture yeah. and do it in a flat tray mm. and then you can cut it into squares. Like, yeah. So the mixture... I'm going oh. to put half in. Okay. Uh, then I wonder what, what I think I know about what, what, what might happen next. Half in the, and then you're patting it down yeah, to fill it. the space. Yes, yeah, spread it all round. Very good at judging what's half. You want to make it because you're going to put the jam. <laughs> yes, the jam. This is what I was thinking. The jam goes between the layers. Just a little bit more. If you want a good base, I should think. It should be, be quite nice. I like I like baked well tarts and I like almond things. I'm a bit funny with nuts. There's not that many nuts I like. Well, um, uh, nuts enough. I'm nuts enough. I think, I think I'm de definitely right. Uh, here comes the jam, raspberry jam, homemade. Homemade raspberry jam. Right? Vintage when 2022 or. Um, it wasn't last year. It might be the year before mm -hmm. actually. So quite a generous helping to cover the. Yeah, it's not right to the edges, though. Mm. I don't think that perhaps ooze out. I just so will it all mixed, will it kind of... It's not going to be like a cake, because you, if you were doing a cake with a, I don't know, a cream filling, you'd have do two cake yeah, cakes, and, two. but this isn't going to be like that. This yeah. is going to be cooked in one go, so... Yeah. But it sort of merge in in the middle, do you think? Now we're right. putting the top, the top layer on. And this is a bit, bit more difficult, because you don't want you to don't displace want, the... Mm -hmm. So you do it in, don't want to displace the jam. How, how much of the jam will be, when it's finished, how much of the jam will be, will it be, the jam still be evident or will it be more like in the flavour than I that? should think it'll be more like, I've, I've done it with um, muffins. Mm. Um, no, I should think it'll, it, it won't be. Um, it'll be there in spirit. Yes, it won't be sort of, <laughs> sort of I mean, I made bacon tarts. And that, but then you, you're putting the, the layer of jam on top of the pastry. I think peanuts and almonds are the only nuts that I willing I eat willingly. Like I would actually have a bag of uh, 
a bag of almonds and eat, eat them. No, I don't like almonds. Mm. I like peanuts, but don't give me peanut butter at all. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have them in a cake. Or peanut, peanut um, butter. Peanut like, butter, yes. I don't like peanut butter. You don't? Yeah, I, well, Americans like it a lot. I think it's yeah, not I so like popular peanuts. over here. I don't know why. So it's a bit like Marmite over here. Some people like it and some people don't. A lot of a lot of chocolate bars in America are peanut based. So I guess in the scraping of all the If I was if I was a weenie tiny tiny a weenie tiny a weenie tiny boy I might ask to to scoop the spoon, but I don't think I'd do that. <laughs> don't think there's gonna be much left anyway. I do remember doing that though when I was little. Oh yes, I usually um lick the fork or something. <laughs> Bit wary when there was the Worry about salmonella in uh, eggs, yeah, which is raw eggs. Yeah, but, um, we've always, always bought eggs from reputable establishments. <laughs> well, those back, back alley, back, none of those back alley eggs, <laughs> men, men with hoods on. Right? Um, so yes, we've got both, both halves of the mixture with the jam in the middle, and would you? Uh, I yeah, would you try it with um well maybe we, you maybe if this works you'll try i, I wonder what, what it would taste like with like an, i know um she'd lick the fork listeners um <clears throat> um i wonder whether it would be nice with apricot jam in the middle i know bakewell mm, uh, yeah, but i think i think i think i think almond and apricot would work as well i'm sure you do have some sort of and if almond. you were going to eat it that day or Certainly, mm. within two days, it would be nice with fresh fruit. But yeah. Right, I think that's about level. Right. Unless it'll rise unevenly. Yeah. Mm. When so. you get it out of the oven, you dust it with ice. How long will it be in the oven for? Well, that, that, that's the thing. Uh, All ovens vary. Yes. Yeah. It, it says 180 degrees for 50 minutes. Mm. So I shall, bearing in mind, I'm also cooking the roast lunch. Yeah. So um, you know, it's not going to be as quick but on the other hand I should look at it in about 20 to 30 minutes because sometimes they're not cooked in the middle but they get brown on top so mm. you want to cover mm. the top with some um, greaseproof paper or a piece of foil any paper to stop it browning anymore or else yeah. you'll get a burnt crust on top now right. it's going towards the oven I've got to put my parsnips in first. Oh, don't put them, not in the cake. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember I can't open it and I'm going to turn the roast potatoes over. This is, this is not... Because remember I can't open the oven for <laughs> at least 10 minutes. Okay. So you don't have, don't worry about this bit, listeners. You, you don't have to be doing your, it's not compulsory to be doing your Sunday lunch at the same time. There's, there's spr- we got sprouts today. I love sprouts. Yes. Got sprouts and corn. Uh, yeah. I've cooked enough to do. Um, oh, what? Oh, oven and squeak. Oh, you've oh, good. Right. Cake's it, going in. It should really be in the middle of the oven, but the roast is taking the oven, so I just near the top. To the yeah. top one. Yeah. Right. So I should look at it. It's twenty two twelve now, and I'll look at it at twelve. Oh, we might we might not we might not stop for that bit. We might come back for the end for the end reveal. <laughs> uh-huh. I want it to be because of, we have our roast at half past twelve, so I'm hoping it'll be cooked and I don't have to be uneconomical and leave the oven on. Right. Well, we'll we'll is, is that all you need to tell us? We'll we'll go away for a bit and come back and see how it looks at the end. Oh, what's this? This is something different. You are oh, you putting? Oh on? no, I'm just. Um, I, Tidying the kitchen. Food containers, and I've yeah. got, I can now get in um, yeah. my my extra. Cup. Okay, listeners, we'll we'll, we'll join join us again soon when we discover whether the cake worked, and then we'll probably do a taste test right at the end, um, like yeah. later, later, later. When when do we get to taste the cake? Tea time. Tea time. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, listeners, go away and do something else whilst whilst it all cooks. It'll I be. I will try not to poison him. Yeah. The only time the, 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 there is there is a story I could tell about a, a Christmas cake and a pin, <laughs> but I still not got over that. I don't think it was deliberate. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I'll tell the story later. Bye. <laughs>
test the crane if it reaches all I made. Exciting times, listeners. The cake's coming out of the oven. Here it comes. Looks very good. The something's good for bit brown on the side. I usually use a cocktail stick, but you can use a skewer just to put it around the middle. If it comes out cleanly, it's mm. done. If it got moisture on it um, I think if you press the top as well I think that's done mm. you don't want it mm. <laughs> another yeah just there you have to press it in several places I um, might need to go I'll back put in. it in for another um, 10 minutes probably yeah. might even just turn the oven off okay. well we'll sure. see how it tastes when we come back it'll be time to taste it and The cake is here. Um, what did you say? You said it had um, sunk a bit. Sunk a little bit. It looks right. And it should be dusted with ice and sugar and fake almonds on the top of it. Cutting the cake. <laughs> That's quite soft. Looks. Oh, you can see the jam. Jam's. Jam's not sunk. Jam's not sunk. Oh. That's worked out. I right thought it might just sort of dissolve into the. I think it might dissolve into the mixture. Or sort of. That should that should keep it moist as well. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> yep. Pass the taste test. And the jam keeps it nice and moist in the middle. Not that. It's not that almondy. Um, maybe some actual almonds and it would have been a good idea. Sorry, you can't share it, listeners. It's very yummy, though. Young John, is it dinner time yet? Is it dinner time yet? Like, what? I'm supposed to get your dinner for you. Well, uh, you're here. Oh, dear, why don't you get my dinner? Why don't I get my, di my dinner? No, not my, yours. Mine, oh dear. Why don't I get your dinner? Why? Well, because why? why should I get your dinner? Well, isn't that what you like to do, to be helpful? Oh, dear, Yeti Uncle John. Has Uncle Warren taught you nothing? Oh, young Uncle Warren's taught me quite a lot, I love you know. Some of it doesn't bear to be repeated, but there we go. Yeah, thank you, I don't want to know. Look, um, I was thinking that as you were here and I was here, we might get a takeaway anyway. A takeaway anyway? What's that lot then? No, Yeti Uncle John, not a takeaway anyway. That we would, oh, I just thought we would get a takeaway instead of one of us cooking. Well, that sounds like a good idea. What can we take away? Uh, we can take away quite a lot. But I thought we'd try this place. You what? This place. Wong's Chinese takeaway. Wong's Chinese takeaway? Oh, this. Where did you get that from? That is my menu. I have got a menu, yes. Where did you get this from? 
Well, it's just, uh, you know, a, a, a takeaway menu that I received. Oh, all right. Open six days a week. Five till eleven. Bank holidays, five to eleven. Oh, well done. Closed on a Tuesday. Yes, but it's not Tuesday, so it's fine. Telephone, telephone orders welcome. Yes, but I might just go and pick it up. Although I might call in. Well, well, go on and tell me. T tell you what, can't you read the menu? No, you tell me. Oh, what? Um, okay. Do you want? Do you want an appetizer? Do I want an appetizer? Yes, of course I do. I thought as much. Okay. Uh, mixed mixed starters. You can get a combination of some of these things, but uh. Sesame prawn on toast, crispy seaweed, crispy seaweed, who's eating seaweed? Isn't that for the fish? Well, no, it's it's very nice. It's dried. It's it's salty. It's it's very tasty. Oh, oh well, then go on. A deep fried chicken with spicy peppercorn and salt. Deep fried chicken wings with spicy peppercorn and salt. Deep fried squid with spicy peppercorn and salt. Deep fried king prawn with spicy peppercorn and salt. Uh, spicy peppercorn. Oh no. <laughs> uh, pancake rolls. Vegetarian mini spring rolls. Chicken spring rolls. Uh, duck spring rolls. Satay chicken on skewers with peanut sauce. Peanut sauce? Yes. Uh, 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 alright, go on. Uh, smoked shredded chicken. Crispy lamb. Uh, crispy lamb with plum sauce, crispy aromatic lamb, butterfly king prawns in bread crumbs, uh, deep fried pork dumplings. I think those are like uh, goyosa. Is that it? Uh, yes, under appetizers. Uh, yeah, well then, well, what, what do you mean? Yeah, that sounds good, but uh, I, I don't understand. Well, you read me what I can have for my appetizer. Well, I agree. Yeah, that's good. All of it sounds fine. But, but I, 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 I don't, yeah. I was reading you the menu. There was about 18 things there. Which do you want? You what? Which do you want? Which do I want? Yes, which of those appetizers do you want? Oh, I thought you were offering them all to me. Yes, Uncle John, you can't eat all of them. Can't I? No. There was 18 things. You're not 18 people. Each one of those starters is enough for one person, maybe two even. Well, blow me down with a feather. Uh, I, I did not know. So I've got to pick one of them. Yes, one, maybe two. Oh, gosh. Well, maybe if you read some more of the menu. All right. Um... Well, there's Peking Duck Special. Peking Duck Special? Yes. Peking Duck. Peking Duck? Peking Duck? What's it peeking at? That's not a very good joke yet, Uncle John. No, I, don't, I really don't understand. Peking Duck? But isn't it going to be ready to eat? I mean, as lovely as ducks are, I don't want them peeking at me. No, peeking as in the city. Peeking at the city. What is this? Some sort of voyeur thing? No, no let's just skip that one. Um, do you like spare ribs? Do I like spare ribs? Are they spare? I mean, I don't know. Why are they spare? Who's leaving these ribs spare? I mean, is it because they're not very good? I think I'll skip those. Uh, comedy. No, spare ribs, they're a thing. Barbecued spare ribs. Spare ribs, Peking style, don't, we won't even discuss that. Honey spare ribs, salt and pepper spare ribs, sweet and sour spare ribs. No, sounds very, sounds very peculiar to me. Uh, what else? Well, there's soups, uh, hot and sour soup. I know Paul likes that one. Prawn and sweet corn soup, mixed vegetable soup, chicken and sweet corn soup, chicken and mushroom soup, chicken and noodle soup. One ton soup. One ton soup? You made that up. No, no, one ton soup is a type of soup. 
It has like little packages of meat that they float around in the soup. Jean's left their package in my soup. No, it's a meat package. Yes, so you say. I don't know if I want someone else's meat in my in my soup. It's oh um well let's move on to the main meals. Um what do you fancy? What do I fancy? Well, do you like king prawns? Do I like king prawns? I don't think I've ever met him. Oh. No. King prawns are a type of food, not a type of king. All right. Do I like king prawns? I don't know. Do I like king prawns? Um, I, I perhaps, perhaps not. If you don't know at this age, perhaps we should skip them. King prawn, uh, you can have kwai lum king prawns, but, oh dear, they're very hot. Oh, right. What about chicken? There's plenty of chicken. Uh, kwai lum chicken, deep fried shredded chicken with chili, chicken with garlic butter sauce, chicken with sweet ginger and pineapple, chicken with straw mushrooms and bamboo shoots in spicy garlic sauce, chicken with cashew nuts in yellow bean sauce, chicken with cashew nuts, lemon chicken, chicken with green pepper in black bean sauce, satay chicken, chicken sasquan style with chili garlic sauce, kung po chili chicken, chicken and ginger and spring onion, chicken with mushrooms in black bean sauce, chicken with mushrooms, chicken with pineapple, roast chicken Cantonese style, chicken with bamboo shoots and water chestnuts, chicken with oyster sauce, and chicken with mixed vegetables. Is that it? Y- yes. Yes. Um, yes, Uncle John, that is it. Yeah, all right then. What? Yes, all right, that sounds good. Oh, we're back to this again. Um, yes, Uncle John, I was giving you the option. Which of those do you like? Which do you, which do you want? Which do I like? Which do I want? I thought, oh, I can't have them all then. No, you can't. Well, let me have a think. What else do I do? They do duck? Do duck? Yes, they do duck. Do they? Yes, they do do duck. Oh, they do do they what they do 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 duck do 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 duck do do. No, let's skip duck. What about beef? Do you like beef? I like beef. I like pork. I like both things really. Well, you can have kwai lum beef, beef with garlic butter sauce, beef with sweet ginger and pineapple. Beef with straw mushrooms, beef slices with mandarin sauce, so on and so on. A bit like the chicken. A bit like the chicken? The beef's like the chicken? That's not really the point, is it? I thought beef was supposed to be different than chicken. No, no. Um, when I said like the chicken, I meant, remember the chicken? The, the, the list of chickens that I read? The list of chickens that you read. The options that I read you. Oh, yeah? Yes, well, you can have very similar things with the beef. Right. Yes, like beef and ginger and spring onion and beef with cashew nuts and beef with oyster sauce. Right. Right. Yes. So if there's anything that you'd like the sound of with chicken, but you prefer it with beef, they they probably have it. They probably have it. I can't remember any of what you told me about the chicken now. Let's move on. Well... The pork is very similar. The pork is very similar. Well, this is what I was saying before. What is the point of the pork being similar to the beef or the chicken? Should they all have different tastes and textures? No, I meant that the range of options is similar. Roast pork with mushrooms and black bean sauce. Roast pork with bean sprouts, etc. Etc. I don't think I've ever tried that. No, no, I don't think you have. Maybe you'd like a sweet and sour dish. A sweet and sour dish? I don't want a sweet and sour dish. I want want food. I want to put something in the dish. Yes, that's a good point. Sweet and sour king prawn balls. Sweet and sour chicken balls. Sweet and sour chicken balls. Oh, right. Poor chickens. Yes, what about a curry? What about a curry? I thought we were going to the Chinese. Yes, but the... Chinese also do a nice curry. It says here, curry dishes, including boiled rice or chips. Fried rice instead, um, 40p extra. Mm, sounds nice. Uh, what sort of curry do they do? Roast duck, uh, king prawn, 
special curry. That's the one that Paul likes. That has king prawns, chicken, beef and roast pork all in the same dish. In the same dish? Uh, yes. You can have chicken curry, shrimp curry, beef curry, roast pork curry, mushroom curry, mixed vegetable curry. Okay. And then, of course, there's lots of types of rice. Lots of types of rice. Doesn't that just complicate things? It depends. You can have house special rice. You can have Singapore fried rice. You can have king prawn rice, roast duck rice, chicken, shrimp, beef, pork, ham, mushroom, vegetable, egg, any types of rice. Oh, well, it sounds all very lovely. So is that it? Oh, gosh. Um, there's another page here. Noodles. Do you like noodles? Do I like noodles? Yes, do you like noodles? What kind? How special? How, how special? How special do I like them? No, house. House special. King prawns, chicken, beef, roast pork. Special chow mein. Singapore chow mein with, with chicken, shrimps and roast pork. You can have all those types of different... You know, different meats and fish and vegetables um, that has been mentioned before, but with noodles. All oh, right. So what sort of meats is that? There's lots of meats. You know what the meats is. Chicken meats, shrimp meats, beef meats, pork meats, mushrooms meats, every meat. Oh, right. Uh, and what's that chop suey? I remember chop suey. Oh, yes, that's bean sprouts. So again... You can have chopped suey with beef, uh, you know, chicken, um, all of those sorts of things. Right. Uh, and there's also foo young. Foo young? There's, there's no need to talk to me like that. Oh, dear. It's, it's a type of Chinese scrambled egg. You can have king prawn foo young, uh, shrimp foo young, chicken foo, chicken foo young, etc. Oh, I told you, I don't think I like etc. Uh, it's just really repeats on me. Oh, okay, well, look, let's just run through the last few options. Yes, I think that's a good idea. I'm getting hungry. Uh, you can have tofu. Tofu? I don't think you want tofu. It's a it's a form of fungus. Fungus? Like a toadstool? Well, not exactly, no, but I don't think it's your cup of tea. No, I don't want a cup of tea. I want a, I want a beer, I think. Yes, well, that's fine. What about udon? Udon? Yes, yes, udon noodles in black pepper butter sauce. U udon noodles. Yes, the house special udon. The king prawn udon. Chicken, beef, roast pork udon. Oh, that, that, that's, that's so, that sounds tempting. Yes, yes, because you've probably forgotten all the things I told you five minutes ago now. Yes, that's true. There's vegetable dishes, but, you know, vegetables aren't always your friend. No. There's broccoli with mixed vegetables in oyster sauce. I, I do like that, but more as a side, I think. There are some um, desserts. Banana fritters, pineapple fritters. Um, extras, you know, depending. Oh, uh, oh what's that? What, uh, what, what? What's that at the top of the menu? Oh, I skipped over that option. Oh, you don't need to skip over options with me, Cromarty. I want the full gamut. Uh, well, they also do English dishes. I thought that as we were trying the Chinese, you wouldn't want the uh, um, the, the English um, alternative. Hmm, I'm not sure. Tell me what they do anyway. Uh, roast chicken with chips and peas. King prawn omelette with chips. Special omelette with chips. It doesn't say what makes it special. Maybe there's a gold coin inside. Chicken omelette with chips. Shrimp omelette with chips. Roast pork omelette with chips. Ham omelette with chips. Uh, mushroom omelette with chips. And plain omelette with chips. Uh, no. You're right, Cromartie. You shouldn't go to a Chinese restaurant and have the English alternative. That, that, that does, you know, I can have any of them things any day. I can make half them things, you know. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm quite a, a bona fide uh, cordon bleu chef. Yeah, I'd be quite blue when I, well, when I want to be. Uh, yeah, special omelette with chips. That does raise questions. 
Oh, oh dear. I can't think what I want now. Oh, I knew this would happen. Why don't you just look through the menu? No. That's ridiculous. Uh, uh, what do you think, Cromarty? Oh, I think because you're so bad at making decisions, there are set dinners. Set dinners? Yes. Uh, meal for two. Um, meal for three, if you're really biggie. Ooh, what you get in the meal for three? Uh, um, prawn crackers, roast pork with mixed vegetables, beef with oyster sauce, kung po chili king prawns, sweet and sour chicken balls, and egg fried rice. Okay. It's three the most I do. Well, we're only two for a start. Yeah. Oh, we do four. Yes, but we're not four people. We could always keep that over for another day. Read, read that one. Oh. Um, set dinner E. Prawn crackers, sesame prawn on toast, honey spare ribs, keen prawn with cashew nuts, beef sasquan style, chicken with green pepper in black bean sauce, um, sweet and sour pork, a Hong Kong style, special fried rice and Singapore rice noodles. Oh, it does sound quite a lot, doesn't it? Oh, I don't want meal for one. Yes, it would be enough for me, but it makes no sense if we if there's two of us. But there's not much choice in the meal for two. Oh, what about this one? It's another one for four. Here, yeah, but look, prawn crackers, half a crispy aromatic duck with pancakes, kung po chili chicken, beef with oyster sauce, roast beef Cantonese style, king prawns with mixed vegetables and egg fried rice. Yeah. I like the sound of that. Should we get that? Oh, oh, yes, all right. We can get that, but there's going to be leftovers. We could even offer some to Paul. We should offer some to the listeners. They're going to be very hungry after hearing this sketch. Yes, good point. Well, listeners, there might not be anything left, but we'll do our best. Yes, order it. Uh, 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 can, you, can you pay for it? I'll, I'll give you my share. Uh, when well, I'm paid. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, Uncle John, it's fine. Let it be my treat. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm very hungry now. All this talking about egg fried rice and pork balls. Yes, yes. Well, you should be used to it. You're always talking along those lines. Oh, th- th- thank you. When's it going to arrive? I've not even rung in for it yet. Oh, right. Shame you can't do it telepathically. No, you can't order Chinese telepathically. At least I can't. Oh, well. Maybe one day, eh? In the future. Yes, in the future. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, I can't wait. When's it coming? I'll just go and order it. Yeah. Oh, look at them pictures. It's all so alluring. Oh, I'm starving now, starving. Suddenly, it's available to drive. Uh, listeners, I'm here with Paul at Wildwood. Uh, we're about to go to the cinema. What, what are we going to see, Paul? We're going to see Indiana Jones. And um, we're, we're excited. Keep excited. It's not just the ice cream, isn't it? I think the thing is, we're excited to see it, even though neither of us have seen the third Indiana Jones. Or the fourth. The fourth was awful. Uh, I'm I saw sure I've seen the first or second. Oh, no, I saw the fourth. The fourth was awful. <coughs> You're the expert with this. You know, you know far more about Mr. Jones. Um, and, um, uh, the first one is the best one. I like the second one because it reminds me of a Filipino friend of mine. Because of the little boy that plays um, the, the kid or whatever, isn't it? Which is the one that has the ball rolling down the... Is that the Temple of Doom? I think that's the first that one. Well. I think it's the I didn't first even realise until I looked at the weekend that um, Temple of Doom is a prequel to, um, to Raiders of the Lost Ark. I didn't know that. Well, that's just how little I know about them, really. 
well, I, I'll tell you something that you won't. The, the, the truth is, the truth about these films. Yeah. And I shouldn't really tell you this, but I'm, I'm prepared to. I'm prepared to to entrust you with a secret. You mustn't tell anyone. But Indiana Jones is all about when Han Solo goes into the carbonite and is frozen. He dreams, and he, what he dreams about is becoming being Indiana Jones. So Indiana Jones is, is actually Han Solo's dreams. Is it like what happened in, D- in Dallas? When... No, but this is real. Oh. Han, Han, Solo, <laughs> Han Solo didn't come out of the shower and go... Uh, well, we don't know yet. He's oh, working up. He hasn't come out of the shower. He's working up. Oh, you better get on with I, it. But I think you'll find... <laughs> I think you'll find when he does wake up, he's back on the Millennium Fox. <laughs> I think you'll find he that. Much, he won't have much time awake before he... No, he won't. Be, but, no. Um, but he won't do. But I've got very... I have to tell you, I've got very, very high expectations for this film. Well, well, we'll have to judge how much he's been enjoyed uh, on the journey home. Um, yeah, we'll have to report back. The last film we saw together was Scream. And you, you, you've told us about the film that you saw. Oh, the Pope Texas. The Pope Texas is like that film. Yeah, yeah I've not well, been. There's so another film called um, Chevalier. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, that actually, that actually was a historical film. Um, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Um, but there aren't, there aren't that many films that have made me want to motivate me to want to go and see I might be going to the cinema I don't know I don't know what there is to see other than Indiana Jones but I have a friend coming to visit on the weekend and I said oh we could go if the weather's not good we could go to the cinema but, yeah um, you see Mission Impossible yeah, yeah. oh oh not I can tell you're not, not enthusiastic I'm not a big fan of Tom Cruise to be honest I'd rather watch paint dry. Really? Um, what about Red Dwarf? Would you would you watch it over Red Dwarf? Red Dwarf? I would, I would rather pour my eyes. <laughs> what, they, what, they made a movie of Red Dwarf? Yeah, well, they're going to, yeah. Make a movie of Red Dwarf. No. Um, <laughs> you don't even want to give it the publicity, do you? No. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think I saw the first two. I like, I like Fish and Impossible in the 60s. Right. I have it on DVD. Okay. But... I mean, I don't like it. Now? I, 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 and, you know, I would only want, even the old series, I would only want to watch one or two episodes at a time. Well, I'll tell you what, I, the only thing is, they have filmed some of it, like this one, they have filmed in Derbyshire. It's not, please be not, it will look nice. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, we need to focus on the film that we're going to see tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll report back. We need to get a move on. Yeah, soon, sorry, so. we've got to go. So sorry, just needs you. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know what we thought. Sorry, on, we should have started time. this a lot earlier. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we'll report back on the way home as long as Paul doesn't get distracted when he's driving. Right. Um, wish us luck. Bye. Maybe that's why they don't, they don't charge as much. I. We have pretty much. seats are like. I mean. Big, yeah, they were, they were like. But they, you might as well have been sitting on a wooden board by the end, didn't they? Yeah. They were so. They were so it they was went, just a long film. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, and I don't like those stupid. The, um, the cup holders. They're so. If, if you're. If you're Slightly chubby gentleman like myself. Uh, they're really di- sort of thinking to dig in. I tried to get more comfortable. They're, they don't need to be so in the way. Uh, they're really made of really. You could just push them slightly off. Oh, they need to be designed those. But um, but we enjoyed the film, didn't we? Paul? Yeah, I'd say. What would you give out of ten? Ooh, eight and a half. Really. That's very high for you. I know. That's very high. I know. But I, 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 I was going to say. I was going to say eight. Yeah, yeah. But um, I maybe that's a bit mean. I thought. What, what did you give Scream? Oh, eight, eight and a half. Really? You preferred this film? Uh, in a way. Wow. Well, there was no Nev Campbell in in the last Scream. Um, mm. But I mean, I obviously I love Scream because yeah, eight, eight and a half is good. 
that I wasn't expecting. But then, if, if, low if, you're not, if you had very low expectations, and then there wasn't much to fall at all. So. Yeah. So that's a lo loads of action. Uh, I mean, the story zipped along. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, I mean, the guy next to me uh, was really yawning and uh, moving around a lot. I think it's also the seats were so. Not Richard. modern, <laughs> yes, exactly. Not modern seats. Oh. Whereas now, if you went to that big screen or the modern, you know, really modern cinemas, you'd, you'd be lying back and, and there'd be half the number of people in there. It was very busy compared to how Scream was. Yeah. Scream, there was about five of us in the whole cinema. I mean, for a Monday, well, for, especially for a Monday night. Mm, what's the late show? But more than yeah. two or three. Um, I wish I could remember who. Um, Name up. Oh, Phoebe. What's oh, is it Phoebe? No, no, no. Phoebe, what's her name? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put free bag. That's easy. Free bag woman. Free bag woman. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> we something did, for else. The, for the seventh anniversary of the podcast, I, I did an episode called The Seven Year Inch, mm. where your Uncle John went to a, a, a flea market and bought an old Afghan coat from the 60s which of course was covered in fleas mm. and then he went about sort of going to a he wore it to a party because he insisted on wearing it even though it was too hot and people could say take your coat off he was like oh, I can't I'm not appropriately dressed underneath the coat mm. <laughs> but I had, I had to do it because with the phrase seven year itch oh Phoebe oh it is I think I know it's Phoebe Waller Bridge Waller Bridge okay yeah. I started saying Phoebe like Lola Pigeon, but that's that's another act. That's a, a, another actress. This, uh, but anyway, Phoebe Waller Bridge um, is kind of yeah. The main thing, the main reason that film was an eight point five because um, she was very good in it. She was very uh, good, yeah. and she she was a good contrast because he's yeah. he's he's a bit really <laughs> one note. Um, is is uh, House of Paul, which is fine for that character. Yeah, but you need somebody for him to bounce off somebody who's causing trouble or um she's like the anti-hero isn't she yeah and uh yeah, quite a lot of lines and, and there are bits of lines i kind of missed i wouldn't i wouldn't be against i wouldn't even be against owning that film at one point if i could get it cheap maybe there'll be a maybe there'll be a box set of all of the films yeah old band that i can yeah. get for relatively cheap as it makes me want to go and see, see the third one because I, I don't think I've ever seen. I know Sean Connery's in it, yeah, and I think he's on a camel. Uh, but I, I, I don't think I've actually. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen that third one no. all the way through. I think I might have seen like half an hour of it. Yeah. Um, the Temple, Temple of Doom and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Which I, I can't remember if I've seen all the way through. I've only seen bits of but, Yeah, Raiders of Lost Ark is the one in Egypt, and Temple of Doom is when they're in, um, I don't know if it's like India or it's set in Middle East or something like that. I think they, they, they um, I mean, Harrison Ford is, was he 80 now? But if you can digitally enhance, I mean, yeah, because the early scene, you, it, it was like he was younger again. Wasn't yeah. It? Um, but they did it to um, Mark Hamill for um, the uh, oh, of Mandalorian, yeah. and he looks almost younger than he did originally <laughs> in, in those films. Uh, so Harrison Ford really thinks, well, they can do it for him, bloody hell. <laughs> And it didn't look, it didn't, it looked convincing. They did it with, um, Donald, I think they did it with Donald Pleasance in one of those Halloween, later Halloween films. He was in a, he was in a scene, and I think that was, that was CGI. Um, he is, yes, uh, he is eight, what's the date, what's the date today? Today is the 10th of oh, July. That's weird, in that case, he's, uh, he's about to be 81. He's. His birthday's the 13th of July, so he's eight, he is 80, and he's 81 in about two or three, well, by the time this comes out, he'll be 81. Didn't look, 
remember then, um, I don't know, if, have you ever seen that um, Holy Murders in the Building? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Steve Martin's like pushing in his late 70s, yeah. and you really wouldn't think it, but then I don't think he has any CGI on him. He's just looking good for his late 70s. Yeah. I think it's because his hair went grey really young, so he's kind of used to, he's been grey haired since the 80s probably. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so we enjoyed the film, and thanks, so thank you, and thank you for getting the tickets, Paul, and ah. for, for being my chauffeur. And for, <laughs> um, we, 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 be, we, we, we better go, listeners, there's other things to be done, and we have other missions to accomplish. The dial is, the dial is turning, ah. we've got to go. Tinker John, what's going on? Oh, I'm just trying to work out what this advert. I'm just trying to work out this advert. I just can't get it right. DIY. Yes, DIY. Do it yourself. Uh, well, this is not very nice. Don't be silly. You know what DIY means? I suppose so, yes. Do it yourself. DIY. Yes, why are we talking about this? Well, because I'm trying to do an advert. Put in the local paper, maybe up on the, uh, the the notice board, you know, by the shops. Right. What what is going on? Well, you know, I'm doing it myself. You're doing it yourself. I am DIY. Do it myself. Do it. Do it. Do it yourself. Well, if I'm doing it, then why do I need you to help? No, I mean. Oh dear. I was going to offer myself up as a DIY expert. You were what? I was going to offer, uh, yeah, I was going to offer myself up as a DIY expert. Oh, yes, Uncle John, I really don't think that's a good idea. What do you mean? Well, you know, what do you know? I mean, what do you know about doing it yourself? I do it myself all the time. Do you, though? Have you? Do, do, do you actually do it yourself? I'll do it myself. Yeah, of course I do. How uh, would I do it if I didn't do it myself? Well, you could ask other people. You can't ask other people to do it yourself. It's, you know, it's not doing it yourself, is it? It's them doing it for you. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, my brain, my poor brain, it hurts. I'm not surprised. You're talking about nonsense. Oh, I'm, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm, oh dear. Um, okay, let's start again. You want to do it yourself? Oh well, I want to offer to do it myself for people who don't want to do it. Okay, so you're offering to be a handyman. A handyman? Yes, a man with hands. Yes. Well, but you're going to help. Yeah. Yeah, no job too small. No job too small. No, no job too small. Some jobs too big. Quite clearly, I couldn't do it all by myself. But I'm looking for the, the jobs that are small. Uh, and there's no job that is too small. So that's good to hear. Yeah. What sort of jobs? Well, well, light bulbs. Light bulbs. Yes, I could do light bulbs. I could, uh, you know, uh, screw in a light bulb, uh, do that, uh, go up some steps, go up some little ladders, uh, I could have coffee sitting on a roof, I could hammer, I could hammer a nail, 
hammer nail, screw screw. Right, that's useful. Uh, what else? I could unblock a sink with a plunger. If your loo got blocked, I could... <laughs> I could probably unblock that too. Okay. So, uh, unblocking the loo, uh, screwing. Yes, I can do screwing. Mm, miscellaneous screwing? Yes, I can miscellaneously screw. Absolutely, I can. Okay. So... Uh, like loose tile on the 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 roof, loose tile on the roof, uh, loose bit of carpet on the stair, uh, handrail needs uh, tightening. Uh, I can uh, I can eat uh, beans on toast, uh, have a coffee. Uh, yes, but that's that's not a job. What do you mean it's not a job? Uh, you know, a workman has to has to rest. Has to get revitalised. Yes, yes, the Uncle John. I guess that is true. Yeah, of course it's true. So, yeah, I'm doing it myself. And I'm doing it for all those who don't want to do it. All right. So, hammering. What sort of hammering are you going to do? Uh, hammering of a nail into a wood. Hammering of a nail into a wood. Uh, anything else? Um, hammering, ha, 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 hammering, just general hammering. Ha, ha, hammer, 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 hammer. Okay, well, at least you seem sure of what you're doing. I am, I'm very sure. I'm doing it myself. Yes, yes, Uncle John, you are. That's very true. Yeah, I want to do it right. I want to help. Yes, yes, well, you are very helpful. Generally, you, you do like, you do like to help. I do like to help. That is true without a doubt. All right. So, odd jobs, uh, quick fix. Odd jobs, quick fix, yes. I can do those things. Um, drinking tea and eating biscuits. Yeah, of course, I could do that too. Well, that is to be expected. A lot of people, you know, if they have a workman around, they expect them to sit there and have tea and eat a biscuit at some point. Yeah, and I'm very good at that. I've done uh, certificates in that. I, I'm not surprised to hear it. It has to be said. Yeah. I know what's what, comedy. I do. Uh, I, I can be a handyman. I can, uh, I can do it myself. Uh, no jobs too small. No jobs too small. Yeah, in fact, the smaller the better. Like, did your cat throw up on the carpet? Well, I can clean the carpet with my high precision carpet cat sit cleaner. Oh, all right. Is that a, a smudge on your wall? Did did uh, did your husband uh, rub up against it when he brought his mistress home at lunchtime? And you were out down the shops. Well, that smudge can be removed. Uh, you think, John? That's very um, very judgmental. Well, what if um, a, a lady had brought her hus her um, ma man mistress? What, master, what do you call it? What do you call it when a woman has an affair with a man? You know, I don't understand. Well, I don't know. Well, you know, you always hear, he's got a mistress. Well, why has he got a mistress? It's a very good point. It's slightly going off the point. Yes, what, why, why uh, uh, you know, why should the woman not be the instigator? Why should the woman not have a bit on the side, a toy boy? Oh, I agree. Yes, but a toy boy seems very fanciful. A mistress sounds very, you know, ooh, very, um, I don't know, very, very formal. Yes, yes. Well, the male version of the mistress is not something we're going to discuss this time. Oh, all right. I just wanted to know. Anyway, I'm glad to see that you're doing it yourself. I am. I'm doing it myself. Although, I do wonder if you could help. You wanted me to help you do it yourself. Only a little bit. I wanted you to hold my ladder so, so, so I don't fall off. You want me to hold the ladder? Y yes, Cromarty. Uh, if you could. Where is the ladder? Here. Yeah, over here. Oh, yes, Uncle John, it's only a tiny step ladder. You don't need me to hold that. I do. 
Oh, I'm a fear of heights. Oh dear, a fear of heights is not good for somebody who is doing it themselves. Oh no, I'll overcome it though. I'll overcome my fear. Oh goodness, you better do. I will. Oh, yeti Uncle John. Um, well, what is the job you're doing? You know, you're only just slightly, you know, above the floor. Oh no, it's it's, uh, it's a tricky, a tricky one. I, I just need steadying. That's all. You need steadying. All right. Well, I'm sure we can. Yes. I just need to put this calendar on the wall. You want to put the calendar on the wall? I, I think you could just do that without going up a ladder. Oh no, but you have to go up a ladder. When you're up there, you might decide to have a dizzy spell, and then fall, and then you can claim on your insurance. Yes, Uncle John, this isn't the way you go about thinking about your new um, pursuit, your new employment uh, of, of doing it yourself. I don't know, it's a complex world out there. I don't know how people manage it. I think I'm going to have a lie down. Yes, yes, Uncle John, why don't you do that yourself? Go and have a lie down. Yes, I'll, I'll rethink things. Uh, maybe, yeah, oh dear, do it myself. Doing it myself, yes. Doing it myself never felt so snuggly. Oh, dear. Are uh, you coming for a snuggle? Yes, young John, I will not. I, I need to do it myself without your help. Oh, all right. Uh, doing it myself. Yes, it's the way I've always wanted to. Yeah, it's nice. Independent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeti Uncle John. Hello, Paul. I'm lying on the bed with a cocktail in my hand, wearing my hairy coat. And Martha is here, so she might meow. But I thought I'd do a little special message for you. Because we've been watching Crossroads and having a good time. Did you know that there were actually words to the Crossroads theme tune? Mmm, there were. So, I'm going to sing you the words to Crossroads. Get ready. I stand at the Crossroads Without you beside me There's no one to guide me Which way will I go? Gone, lost on the breeze Drifting like a cloud Way up above me That was love So hard to please Flying like a bird Far, far away my life at the crossroads My dream far behind me Of love Long ago Now where is our song of love Where are all the words Saying you love me Though the road's winding and long Maybe you'll be here with me one day. My life at the crossroads, my dream far behind me. So much to remind me of long, long ago. We'll meet at the crossroads. Then promise forever We'll make it together Wherever we go Wherever we go Well, listeners, that's about all we've got time for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the natters between Cromarty and Yeti Uncle John, and I hope you enjoyed the the baking and, and the the general 
banter with um, Paul from school. But yeah. But anyway, that's what we've got time for. Yeah, but we've got plenty of other episodes in the can. So join us again soon. Take care. And uh, we'll say goodbye for now. Bye-bye for now. Bye now. Bye-bye. looking for something kind of chilled something you could just um listen to and chuckle along to get your uncle john's stupidity oh boy i'm so glad i recorded those now so 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 what uh, what's going on uh nothing what what, what you, you did you use the word stupid and my name in the same sentence yeah yes we actually did get your uncle john but you know that must happen quite a bit i'm sorry What's been going on? We've just uh, been sharing with the listeners an episode that um, contains some conversations that Cromarty had recorded of you. Of me? Yes, of you. I didn't know it was being recorded. Oh, at this stage, Yeti Uncle John, just presume any conversation's being recorded, I think. Oh dear, no. What conversation? Oh, look, we'll tell you in a minute. I can hear the theme music coming. It's been entertaining. Yes, it's been entertaining. <laughs> yes, yes, you said such silly things. He did, didn't he? Yes, yes. What? What? I, I feel persecuted. Persecuted. I've got to go now. I don't care. Bye. I want to go with you. I've got to go. Bye. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> It's been good, but yeah, definitely time to come home now. Wow. Really? No kidding. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, 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 goodbye. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's going on now? Oh, it's the Shy Life Podcast. Let's go! I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net That is so cringe, oh my god. You're a man of culture as well. <laughs>《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》
I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. Just, just, just be glad that you've made a, a starving appearance in another episode of the Charlotte Podcast. Oh, well, I'd like to, yes, but uh, how is he, Paul? Uh, has he forgiven us? Forgiven you, Cromarty. You're the one who recorded it, apparently. Oh, well, yes, that's true. Yeah, well, it wasn't just you, yes, Uncle John. Or it wasn't just you and Cromarty. We we had some baking. You had baking on a podcast. Yes, yes, we had baking on a podcast, plus we had Paul from school. Oh, well, sounds very much like a standard episode of the Charlotte podcast. It was, but that's what we were looking for. A little bit of a laugh, uh, a chance to uh, laugh along with, with your antics. Uh, yeah, and some, some, some conversation and some cooking. Uh, well, all right then. I'll forgive you. Thank you. I'll forgive you too, Cromarty. In my pleasure. What? Oh. Anyway. Oh, are, we, are we going now? We absolutely are. Yes, we're going. Time to go. Yes, time to go. Oh, right. Uh, I'm going. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, there's nothing I like better is when another new episode of the Shy Life Podcast comes out. <laughs> this is just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Oh, I think that was a wonderful episode, don't you, Toppy? I sure do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, friends, it's a great podcast where the Shy Life travels around. Six hundred and sixty-three. Six hundred and sixty-three. Six hundred and sixty-three. Six hundred and sixty-three. Six hundred Oh, I love Dee Dee. Oh, I've got a question. Am I tailored and tight or loungy and loose? Well, you're both. Tailing is pivotal at this season. But you do need to relax too. Oh, thank goodness for that. Good day, esteemed listeners. Pray mark your diaries for the 15th to the 17th of September, for you shall want to be in attendance at pride48.com. We cordially invite you to our grand denouement, the 15th and indeed final annual podcasting gala. Join us as we traverse the kaleidoscope of our community featuring delightful LGBTQ and LGBTQ-friendly podcasts from the illustrious Pride 48 lineup as well as a few surprises. It's your last opportunity to be part of this extraordinary event. Should you desire further particulars, visit the Pride 48 website. Don't forget, dear listener, September 15th to the 17th. Don't miss your opportunity to partake in this splendid celebration only (laughs) at pride48.com. Et voilà.